Here is a simple model that can be used to spot the red flags of panic and to help keep us operating in high performance states as much as we possibly can. Very simple. Imagine the numbers 1 to 10. 1 to 3 is our comfort zone. In this zone, our attention is settled on mundane or pleasant things. Spending too long in our comfort zone will often leave us feeling restless, irritable or unfulfilled. 3 to 7 is our stretch zone. Our attention will point in a particular direction or be focused solely onto a specific challenge. We are stretched because our mind and body are switched on enough to work to the best of their abilities, but they are not so switched on that they are overloaded. This is a state where we can enter flow-like situations. The stretch zone is what we try and achieve when we are training and performing. 7 to 10 is our panic zone. At this stage, we have gone too far. Our vision narrows, we see threats, look for escape routes, and miss out on noticing all the different choices available to us. Our body is rigid or poorly coordinated. This is commonly known as the fight, flight, or freeze response, and it damages our ability to train and perform, and even our health in the long term. Let's take a look at how we can use this model to our advantage. Step one, self-awareness. Learn how to build as clearly as possible a detailed picture of what each zone feels like. What do we see, feel, hear, and notice? The more detail we have, the more clear we can be. The more clear we can be, the more choices we have available to us. Use a system that works for you. If the numbers don't work, perhaps it might be easier to think in terms of colours, sounds or sensations. The most important element is that it helps enhance your self-awareness. So take your time to make the model fit your needs and not the other way around. Step 2. Have a range of skills for each zone. Comfort. Most performers and athletes don't need to learn how to get out of their comfort zone. They should learn how to recognise how to get into it more easily and more often. Being in the comfort zone allows us to process our experiences and consolidate our learnings. Making time each day for being comfortable in a restful state is extremely valuable, not only for health and well-being, but also for progression towards one's craft. Stretch. Anyone who is mastering their craft should be looking into as many ways as possible to maintain and expand the stretch zone whilst they are training and performing. The list of skills one could use is much too long for this video, although the number one technology that we should all be using is the power of the breath. Panic. Spotting our personal red flags and learning how to navigate around or de-escalate panic is extremely important. Again, the use of controlled breathing is crucial and creating physical and verbal safety anchors may be helpful. Entering into a panic zone always causes some level of damage. Sometimes the experience will be too large to process easily and it may need lots of time and additional help and support. We never need to seek out the panic zone. If we are passionate about what we do and are interested in high performance, then from time to time we will stumble into it by accident. At this point, it is down to us to manage it effectively. As the old saying goes, we don't rise to the level of our expectations we fall to the level of our training. I'd just like to say a thank you to all my Patreon supporters for helping these videos to grow and flourish. You are the best. If you are enjoying these videos, then please help the channel to grow by liking or subscribing, or even becoming a Patreon supporter yourself by clicking on the link below this video. Until next time, I wish you a pleasant life and awesome climbing.